Hi, I'm Bob Beeman, and I'm going to be showing you a few different aura repairs today. Um, the first one is going to be removing the inner grip on a sweep handle. Um, and the process is the same whether you're removing the green rubber grip or our blue cellular grip or, um, well, the wood is a little bit different, but it uh, is still a similar process. And then I'll also show how to remove and replace a suede grip and how to uh, cut down a pair of skulls two centimeters from this, this ore is a 284, we're gonna cut it down to a 282 um, by removing the end plug. And then I'm gonna show you how to remove a grip um, that has a, a stuck grip or that has a, um, a strip screw. So the first one is this one here, it's a skinny sweep. And the list of tools you need would be, you need the glue cartridge, a two part urethane glue cartridge starts to to install the new grip. Um, that's, that's for a wood veneer, a green rubber, or a blue cellular grip. Uh, the the um, suede doesn't require adhesive. So the, the glue and then uh, 409 Loctite, that's a type of super glue. That's for gem plugs. Uh, utility knife, we've got one here. We've got some paper towels. Um, a source of heat. And today, I'm going to be using just a regular heat gun. Um, we get these at hardware stores. Uh, we also have uh, the uh, propane torch, but this can be uh, kind of a double-edged sword. It, it's great because it's a good source of heat, but you can use too much heat and uh, cause problems damaging some of the components. So for what we're doing, I'm going to use the heat gun today. Um, then the, the other thing you need is uh, sandpaper and vice grips. And um, I'm gonna start by cutting this, this old grip off. But what I like to do is to put the new grip on, you have to remove the end grip. And part of the process I always do is to mark where the grip was. Um, there are cases where the, um, the link sticker has been worn off or is not there. And I want to make sure I know where that grip was, what length it was set at before I take it off. So I always take a magic marker and I make a little mark. So I know when I'm replacing it, I know where to put it back on too. So I've got a power driver here um, as far as a tool. But we also have our, our new tool, which gives you the six millimeter bit. It gives you the um, collar 5 16 um, bit. It gives you the Torx which is also the grip, the grip adjusting um, screw. And then it gives you the older style Phillips, Phillips um, head. For, that, does, uh, that does the set screw um, in the sleeve. It does the screws in the sleeve and the older style um, clamp screw and end screw. So go ahead and remove the grip, but got it loosened up because you wanna, you wanna make sure you don't have that on there when you slide the new one on. I'll just put that aside and then I take a knife and actually you have to be really careful but I go down through each handle has uh, two seams a seam on either side and I I try to follow the blade right down through the seam that way uh, you're not scratching a new part so you just slice through the green and try to not slice any of the uh, fiber handles then uh, oftentimes you can actually peel it off but sometimes it's stubborn and it really sticks. So I like to heat it up a little bit. I take, uh, take the heat gun and heat it up for a couple of minutes and it comes off a lot easier. Sometimes depending on uh, you know, how old it was and uh, what type of adhesive, uh, sometimes you have to, they're pretty stubborn. Uh, a lot of times when they're retrofitted beforehand, they might be, uh, you might use a, an adhesive from a hardware store or some other type of adhesive and they can be really hard to get off. So I heat it up a little bit and then the grip should peel right off pretty easily. Um, pretty hot now, yeah. So I go ahead and peel it down where I cut it and that comes off really nice. You can see it, you can see the glue that's left on the, on the handle and um, you want to make sure and remove all of that. There's, there's uh, 
flutes on our newer grips, which actually helps with adhesion from the grip to the handle. So it leaves these ridges of glue and you wanna make sure you remove all of that. So what I do with this is I'll heat this up too after the grip's off and then that adhesive comes off a lot easier. Um, there are times, like I said before, that uh, the adhesives vary a little bit and um, sometimes it can be really stubborn. I've actually taken some off that had the uh, wet system, the two-part wet system, and that's a mess. It's really hard to get the, the glue off. So depending on if it was supplied by the factory, it's going to be this urethane adhesive, but it could be other types as well. I also want to point out that our, the grips that we, we install at the factory, um, the, the rubber grip and the blue cellular and the uh, uh, wood is going to have um, peel ply. It's an area under on the handle that is uh, roughed up so it has better adhesion and that can be problematic for getting all the glue off but you want to scrape it. I'm, I'm using a utility blade and I'm using it on edge. And that's what I found peels the glue off really well. So I turn it, rotate as I go, and make sure I get all these heat off. Takes a little bit of time, but you want to make sure, especially if you're going to retrofit from the green grip or the blue or the wood and go to suede, you want to make sure you've got all the adhesive removed because if you don't, you will feel that, that adhesive through the grip uh, of the suede. So really important to get all the glue off, but you want to make sure you don't uh, scratch, scratch the handle too much or, or uh, dig so deep that you dig down into the, the carbon fiber. So you've got to be careful. It's okay to make little marks. Uh, and to remove the glue, you're not going to hurt the handle, but uh, just be careful of how you're doing it. So I've got most of it off. I'm going to it's cooled down a little bit, so I'm actually going to heat it back up again. It's fine to do this two or three times if it uh, it makes the process of removing the glue a lot easier to do. So I'll heat this part up again. You want to get it down so it's a, a smooth surface. And this, uh, you know, it takes some time, but it's not a big deal. If you're doing a set of them, what I like to do is get them all done, all the glue removed and all the grips off, and then I go down through and I'll uh, put all the grips on at the same time. And I'll show you that in a minute here. So yeah, that, that adhesive comes off a lot easier if it's heated up. It just, it just scrapes right off really nice. Yeah, the heat gun temperature really degrades the, the urethane. So, there's a lot of little tricks with, with lower repairs, uh, little nuances that can help you get it done better. So, good to, we've, we've learned a lot of the tricks of the trade over the years and um, trying to find the best way to do it and the least chance of damage in the ore when you're doing a repair. I'll uh, want to wipe it all off now. Make sure I've got all the glue off. You can use a rag or, or just check it out. Pretty much there's a little bit, a little bit more there. I'm going to get off. Make to make sure it's all, all gone. The other thing is when you slide the new grip on, you don't want to run into glue that's left on the handle, and then it makes it hard for the grip to slide on. So you really want to make sure you've got it all off. And, um, and again, make sure you, you do because uh, you can actually feel it under the grip if you don't. Even, even with the, uh, the other types of grips, the, uh, the green grip and the blue cellular, you can feel it if you leave like a, a, a nub of um, adhesive there. So this is cleaned off pretty well. So I'm ready to put a new one on. I'm actually going to put a new green back on and um, what we do with the green and the blue is we'll actually heat them and you can do that by, you can use water, like a, like a bucket of water or, um, you know, under a sink. I can do it, I do it here with the uh, heat gun and I just will 
heat it up a, a bit. So it's not too hot to hold on to, but so it's pretty hot. What this does is it is it makes it so the grip will stretch on and slide on easier. So I'll do each end. So it's just pretty hot. It's probably probably around 100 degrees, maybe a little more. Just make it so it's pliable. If you're in a um, hot temperature zone, you oftentimes don't need to do it. But if you're at the head of the trails in October on a cold day, then you really need to keep the grip up. And it makes a big difference on how well it slides on. Actually put some heat right down the tube. And um, if you try to do it with cold, cold grip, you're gonna have a really hard time. So I've got my two part adhesive here. I'm just gonna change the tip on it. I've got a new tip right here. And uh, put that on there. And what I like to do is I put rings inside the, the grip. I'll start way in, I'm, I'm going way in with the nozzle. So I'm at about midpoint inside the grip. And I'm actually making rings. As I turn the grip, I'm doing like five or six rings of adhesive. So I know the grip is, is totally full of glue. Do that at both ends. And um, you don't want to uh, be too sparingly with the glue on these grips. You want to make sure you've got plenty in there because you don't want the grips to uh, work themselves loose over time. So I've got, I've got pretty, good, pretty good coverage of glue. The other thing about the glue, using enough of it, is it'll help uh, with sliding a new one on. So this is still pretty hot. I'm actually going to slide right over the handle, trying not to get it on the, on the end plug. You get a little bit on there, but you pull it right on. You see with the nights are warm, you can pull it right on. You pull it right up. There we are. Now, um, oftentimes I will ask, ask uh, where they want their grip. You actually can vary how far you put the grip on. Um, do you want it just at the transition or do you want it part way up, part way up the next transition? Um, and you, I usually ask that when somebody drops their grips off or if I see that they're really high, do they want it back in the same spot? So this is the messiest part, so there's really no way to get around it. Um, we've tried, you know, we've wrapped them with uh, shrink wrap before to try to cut down and it, it does help, but it's not too bad to wipe it, wipe the glue off. You, you definitely want to make sure you get any glue out of the, the end plug. There's a double keyway on one side and a single one on the other. And you want to make sure you don't get any glue inside the hole, the end hole. So I get that wiped off. And I wipe, wipe this part. The other thing that helps is uh, sometimes if you have uh, like wet wipes, wet wipes help a lot to uh, wipe the adhesive. I'll use one more. But now I know that I've got uh, plenty of glue on it and I can see, I can actually see now that I can pull it up a little further. It's not quite a that transition, so it's still warm. Still actually can pull it up, there we go. So it's just uh, more of a personal preference how far you pull it. I generally pull it up a little beyond that transition. And, um, and again, that's the other thing you can do is mark it. If you mark it, you'll know uh, where the last one was. That's pretty helpful. So, and I'll go to my mark that I've got on here that I put on before, of what length it was set at, and um, I put the grip back on. That's, uh, that's a key thing to do if, if you don't have the leg sticker on there. So you know, you know you're putting it back at that same length. So you tighten it up, and then that's good to go. Now, uh, the next one we'll do is a suede grip. And uh, so, so this, this grip now should sit for at least an hour or two. Um, generally, if somebody comes to me after their morning training and they want their grips changed, I change them out. And um, if they come back in the afternoon, that's plenty of time for them to sit and, um, and have a good cure. But um, 
ideally overnight is uh, the 24 hours is a really good uh, rule of thumb. But if you need to use it before that, you can. Um, so now we've got a suede grip, same thing. And with a suede, we've had uh, several generations of our suede. Um, the suede itself has been pretty much the same, but the adhesive that we use to attach this, the suede to the, the handle has varied. And um, because we've, we've uh, through trial and error, we've tried to figure out what makes the, the most sense as far as it's sticking, and then um, to try to remove it. And if anybody that has tried to remove some of our first generation, it's pretty difficult because uh, the, the adhesive sticks to the handle and um, and not the grip, and, and then it's a mess. But I don't know what this one is. It's a little bit older ore, but you actually take a corner of it where the seam is and try to peel it off. I just take my thumb and peel a little bit off at a time. Now, our, our newest handles, if they have a suede grip on them from the factory, the handle will not have the peel ply, the roughed up area. You can see this one here doesn't. And, and that's why you can see how easy it's uh, peeling off. And it actually will, will peel away. And this generation of suede is our newer generation. And the adhesive actually is staying right on the grip that we want it to. And the handle itself is, is clean. So, but that's not always the case. Um, if you're changing some of the older ones, like I said, the adhesive will stay on the handle and you really have to get it off because uh, if you don't take the adhesive off, you're going to end up with problems with your new grip. You're going to feel the bumps of the adhesive underneath it. So it's really important and, and um, there's several different ways you can do it. We've, we've uh, tried isopropyl alcohol to soak it with that a little bit and that, that works with some of the generations, um, but also in the end, you want to make sure you get it all off. And I use the same, I use the utility knife and scrape it off with that. Sometimes you have to like knead it with your thumb and um, pull the, pull the uh, adhesive off. But the key is to get it all off and, and it does take some time to do it. The, um, we're really happy we've, we've gone to this newer generation of grip with the uh, adhesive that works really well. Um, even this, so if you're mounting it over peel ply, it can have a tendency to stick on the handle and um, you have to you have to get it off. So that came off all one piece, pretty easy. Um, we're gonna put a new one on. I'll do that. Uh, the other thing is you wanna make sure, pay attention to where the seam was. Um, you don't wanna, you don't wanna have the seam on the front of the oar where you're gonna feel it with your fingers. You wanna make sure the seam of the suede is on the back. So, and I've seen that a few times. I've seen some, some people that have uh, installed it themselves and either they get used to it or it doesn't bother them. But um, we want to make sure when we put them on, that seam is on the back. So that way you won't hit it with your fingers. So you start it square. What I do is I line it up with the, uh, the seam of the handle like I was talking about and make sure that it's square all the way around. And I took the backing off I was just talking through it, but I peeled the backing off and then I use my thumb and I go back and forth all the way around. Use like the, the palm of my hand too. And this works really well. It, uh, it sort of uh, smooths it out as you go and it puts it on nice and even. So I've done several thousand of them, so it, you get, get really good at doing it. but. It doesn't take very long to get good at, good at doing it. If you do a couple of them, you'll uh, get good at it pretty quick. By the time you've done a set of eight, you're a pro. <laughs> so this is good. The, uh, the seam is the same all the way from front to back. You want to make sure you, you uh, pull on it, or, you know, squeeze on it, make sure it's well attached. We also have uh, shrink wrap. I didn't, I didn't bring some right here, but you can shrink wrap it um, to give it a little more, more time to to stick, uh, particularly in the cold weather, that you might need to do that. This is room temperature and anytime it's warm, um, it's not a problem that it's not gonna come out. But if it's cold, you wanna, you wanna try to wrap it and sort of compress it so you know the grip's not gonna start to peel at all. And in no time, it'll, it'll set and be, be good. 
So here's the, uh, the grip, grip side of the, the uh, suede. I'm gonna peel this off as well, because um, generally when the, the inner grip is warm, the outer grip is worn also. And you can just change the whole grip um, if you like, but uh, economically, it's uh, a good idea to just change the patch. We call this uh, suede patch of the grip. So, and I'm doing the same thing. I take my thumb and I try to peel it away. And it's much like the inner grip. Sometimes the adhesive peels right away, no problem. And sometimes it sticks. This one is actually coming away pretty well. I've got a little bit, a little bit of uh, adhesive that's sticking on that, that handle, but it's not too bad so far. If, uh, if you're lucky, it'll all come, come off in almost one piece. But the main thing is uh, you want to make sure you get, if it doesn't come off, you want to make sure all the adhesive comes off. So this is peeling right away nice. Um, just peel slowly. I always, if I peel just slowly and uniformly, it seems to come off better. And if you try to just rip it off, sometimes that adhesive, adhesive will stick on the, on the grip. So you want to just peel slow. I didn't, the other thing you can do is you can heat it a little bit. And if it is cold out, it's a good idea to heat a little bit before you try to pull it off. But this is all room temperature, so it's fine. Now it all came off, except for like I was talking about some adhesive here. So you can actually take the patch and you blot it on that adhesive and it'll pull it off. You can, I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually pulling the adhesive right off. So you can get all the, all the adhesive off that way too. And um, most times that works. And you can do that the same with the inner grip. You actually blot it, you can hear it, and that's pulling the adhesive off um, that's left over. This is something we sort of discovered by doing a lot of them and, and realizing that uh, it sticks, sticks really well to itself. So that's pretty good, it's all the way around. It's um, back to just a grip. So I've got the new patch, I'm gonna put that on. And you can just start, start at a corner to peel the backing off. I take my thumbs and try to get, get the, uh, the backing to peel off. It's not always easy, there we go. Got to start it. And again, uh, it's really important to make sure that you put that on the back. It's not on, on the front where your hands are gonna be, where your fingers are gonna be. So I line this up. I'm looking down the, uh, the inner grip to line it up. Try to stay nice and square to the grip. And I start and I start putting it down with my thumb and go all the way around the grip and go slowly because this has uh, an exact spot it needs to go and you don't want to have it right up on either the inside of the grip or the outside. So to get, get it down uniformly, just be careful with it. And it uh, works pretty well. You want to make sure you don't have any um, wrinkles and uh, any place that's baggy. But this is going down nicely. It's almost like I've done a few, few of them. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is good all the way around. This was sticking up here just a little bit. You can push it down. You see that? That, that gives you a brand new grip, inner and outer. Which, um, again, I, I uh, try to squeeze it with my, my grip in and out and that pretty much will get it to stay where it is. If, if you see them start to, to pull up, it's not a bad idea to, to wrap it. And you can wrap it with, you know, you can wrap it with tape. You know, I think tape will come off um, like vinyl tape or something like that. But we use shrink wrap when we're doing it at the uh, regatta. Saran wrap. Saran, saran wrap, yeah, saran wrap is another good one. So there's the, uh, that's the suede and the other grips. Now the next repair, I want to show is actually uh, removing removing a M plug, and you might want to do that for different reasons. Um, if the M plug has been damaged for one, one reason or another, you can remove the M plug and put a new one in. Uh, the other reason to do that will be uh, for cutting it down. Now that's what we're going to do with this. We're actually going to cut down two centimeters off from the length. This door is a 284, 284 to 289, and um, it has the uh, it has the length 
sticker on it so I don't have to make a mark on it. Um, but if it, if it was worn off or gone, I would do that. So first thing you do is you loosen the clamp screw. Always loosen the clamp screw a little bit first. And then the end, take the grip right off. This looks really nifty because it's uh, the power tool, but um, we have our, as I said before, we have our new tool and we also have the, uh, the green handle one that just takes longer and it takes multiple turns to get it off. But uh, we found using uh, the cordless drills is really helpful. So if you look at the grip, the uh, M plug, the M plug is oriented on the handle with a keyway. And there's a keyway here that's a raised area. And this is really important when you're gonna take off the, the M plug. It, um, you wanna make sure that that M plug, you can see the keyway here. That's, that's the ridge and there's a keyway of the handle right here. Um, and it's super important you get those things lined up. So when you remove the M plug and you bond in a new one, got to make sure that that's lined up exactly with that, that inner keyway. So to remove it, what I want to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, remove this end plug and then we'll cut it down. So I'm going to heat it up. Um, the end plug is actually uh, attached using Loctite or super glue. And you can degrade that glue pretty rapidly by using a heat gun. I don't, I don't recommend using a torch, you can, but um, anytime you use a, use a torch, you can run the risk of damaging your arm. So I, I recommend using a heat gun uh, in most circumstances when you're working doing oil repairs. The only one that it is necessary is the blade change. And I've actually used a heat gun before to change blades too. So it just takes longer to do. So I'm, I'm heating this up. The area underneath there is about two centimeters. Actually, it's about three centimeters, sorry. Um, so I want to make sure it's hot all the way around for at least three centimeters. What I'm going to do is heat it up really hot. And you can see the, uh, the amp plug starts to get shiny where it's melting. And that's a good indication of uh, the thing being ready to pull out. But all at once, it'll get really, really hot, and um, you can grab it with vice grips and turn it and take it out. And that's what we want to do. I mean, just just a couple minutes it takes to get it hot. I can see this one's almost ready. Okay, I'll give it a try. I've got vice grips here. What you want to do is clamp right onto the end plug with vice grips and turn it. You see it turns right out. And um, you'll notice it's got some smoking to it. Um, it's not advisable to breathe that because that is uh, uh, Loctite, you heat it up. So I let it ventilate around, make sure uh, you can breathe okay. If you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. Um, so then, Check the inside, make sure there's no debris in there. Uh, uh, oh, I actually need, it's gonna get a uh, file, but you can actually use, yeah, I can actually, you can actually use uh, sandpaper as well. I do recommend a round file. Normally I didn't have that on my uh, tool list, but um, it's a good idea to use a round file. Uh, that one might work. Let's give it a try. But, uh, add some help. Yes, yes, it will work. So what, I do use a file, or or you can use sandpaper if you roll it up. And um, actually, I've had times when I've had to use sandpaper. You could just roll it up so it's small enough and go around the handle on the inside like this. What you're doing is uh, you're making sure you get out any of the Loctite that's in there, because as you push the the end plug in, it actually pushes um, Loctite or the super glue in also, and there'll be a ridge in there. And um, sometimes you're trying to put the new one in and uh, you can't push it in all the way because it's glue in the way. So 
a good idea to do that. I'll use both uh, both of the files just to make sure that it's been totally removed. Get all the glue out. That's pretty typical for all of our repairs. Um, anyone you do and you use a pizza for, you want to make sure you remove all the pizza when you're doing the repair. That's pretty good. I my finger in there to feel it's pretty good. And the other thing you do again is uh, tap it out. Yeah, we had some debris and uh, some chunks of Loctite that just came out. Also, we'll sand it, sand the end of it a little bit in case uh, there's any. On the outside. That feels pretty good. The, the one thing I always do is I'll check and make sure it will slide in without glue. Kind of do the dry fit. And it's pretty close. It's uh looks like I need to see a little bit more. Do that first because if you get glue on it and you can't can't uh, get the plug in, you'll end up with a plug part way in and um, that won't be good. You'll have to remove it and start again. So I like to make sure it's sanded enough so the plug will go in there for no problem. You can use a little uh, sanding drum um, bit also. You have those little bits, little burr bit. Also works to sand it. But this does a good job. Um, tap it out again. That's going to be pretty good. You're going to yeah, that's pretty good. I can feel it. Good. Check it again. Yeah, that'll slide right in, no problem. So the the next step that I do is actually will sand a little bit on the end plug because you want to make sure you've got good adhesion from the end plug to the handle as well. The end plugs, uh, the way they're manufactured, they're pretty shiny when they come out of the mold, and so I like to sand them. I've, uh, at times, if you don't have enough ad adhesive on there, and um, with a shiny, unsanded plug, it, there's a chance it could come out. But I found by sanding it, you have some nice ridges on it, and then using the block tight, I've never had one come out. So here we go with the uh, adhesive, and I put it, I put it all the way around the handle all the way around the plug, excuse me. Like strips of it, so you've got plenty on. Make sure that uh, you use enough. And line it up, I've got the, it's gonna to touch it here, I'm gonna try not to touch the super glue. But really important part here, you wanna line up that single keyway with the single keyway of the handle. And I'm pushing it in there. I got it all one, one, one go. It's good because super glue is almost instant. And um, you wanna get it all in there and have it be lined up exactly correct. And because uh, if you don't have it, have it lined up correctly, the grip won't go on. And the grip will be tight and it'll cause all kinds of problems. So this literally is, uh, probably set now. I always like to give it a couple minutes, but um, it is instant adhesive. Um, one thing I do, or one thing I don't do is once I change the plug, I don't screw the grip on right away because uh, that glue, if it's not entirely set, the, um, the action of screwing the grip on can pull the plug out. So I just let it set for a few minutes and then I'll put it back in. Sometimes I'll, I'll just slide it on there and don't um, don't glue it, don't screw it. So that's the um, that's uh, changing the plug. Now we're going to cut one down. We're actually going to cut cut two centimeters off. This is the 284. We're going to cut to 282. So that's similar process. Um, what I need to do is take the grip off again. This one. This is a 284 to 289. And take it totally off. And I actually have uh, masking tape that's, that's two centimeters. Um, one, one reason you can only do two centimeters is 
if you cut off any more than that, and you try to put the grip on as short as it will go, that grip can start going up this transition uh, toward the handle and it can split the grip. So we only recommend doing two centimeters. It's actually a little, little bit more than that, but we don't want to run the risk of, uh, of splitting the grip at all. So if you've got a 284, you can go down to 282. What I did was I put um, one tape around right next to the end plug. That's two centimeters, that's to mark off the two centimeters you're gonna cut off. And then I actually put another, another roll around it, right beside it, and that gives me my curve. That gives me uh, the line that I'm gonna cut off. And another good reason to do that is because when you're cutting it, um, it'll stay nice and square. So I've got a hacksaw that I can cut it off with. Oh, you know, I need, I need another um, M plug for shipping. Sorry about that, it's going to M plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut this. And I will tell you that the M plugs go in a little more than at two centimeters. So I'm actually gonna be cutting down through the M plug, but that's okay. You'll see uh, there's a little bit left in there when you're done. And that, um, that actually comes right out. So you see I'm turning it as I'm cutting it. Cut down through. What I'm trying to do is score the handle all the way around and also establish that square um, square end. So I'm gonna cut down through the handle. Once I've gone all the way around and scored it, then I'll start to cut through. The, uh, the wall of the handle, and I can feel I'm into the I'm into the uh, hemp plug now, and it's kind of like you'll see what it looks like in a minute. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of doing it right now. Yeah, this is the hemp plug. Main thing is just to be careful. Take your time. There we go. Now, as you see. Show this the piece that came off. You can see like the waffle. This shows uh, the outer part of it, and um, like I said, the inner part is still in here. It'll show there's a little bit that's left inside, and we have to remove that. So, I don't know if you can see that, there we go. This uh, this is part of the end plug. It's just a little bit left. I actually will heat that up. If you heat it up and then grab it with uh, pliers, it'll come right out. And I understand that too. So we've cut we've cut two centimeters off from the handle, and then we're going to bond a new hem plug in, and then it'll be a 282 to 287. Right now it's 284 to 289. So that gets hot really quickly. I already saw that that's pretty shiny in there. So you can grab hold of it and pull it out. Yeah, I'm gonna use my knife here. I got the inner part out. Now, what's left? Just a little bit of, there we go, it's coming up now. A little bit of end plug, yep, yeah, coming. You can see this piece of it right there. There it is. That's the inner part. And then actually there, you can see the, uh, there's 401, 409 that's left in here that I described as, as you push the plug in when you're bonding it to leave some residue of uh, 409 in there. So you want to make sure that's gone as well. So I'll use the file again. Get rid of it all. Make sure that you bang it out because um, you can have a rattle. You know. And it's again. That's pretty smooth. We'll tap it out. Okay. And you can remove the inner part of the tape. The other reason to have the tape on the inside is because 
the handle can fray as you're cutting it, if you, depending on the blade you use, it can splinter out the end of the handle, and if you tape it, it won't do that. So it'll, it, it won't uh, cause any splinters to come up. But in any case, I always still sand the end. And, um, and again, it, uh, it makes a nice square end of the handle if you do it as I described in the tape. So, so here it is, and we just need to put another M plug in it to make it that shorter. And again, I, I check it. Yeah, it's going to be sanded a little bit more. You, you don't want to uh, get there and then have it not slide in. We've, we've had that happen before. It's not a good, not a good thing. Sure, absolutely. Yes, the, the older generation of these handles does not have, did not have the single keyway molded into it. And in that case, what you want to do is I line it up. Um, I'm going to tap this out here again, but um, actually line it up using the grip. And that's a great question because um, I'll, I'll take the two keyways and line it up with the M plug. I'll just put it in there like it's like it's going to be, and then I'll line it up with the face of the blade because the um, the clamp screw is supposed to be lined up with the face of the blade, and so you can actually do that uh, when you do it. You can line it up, put it where it's supposed to go, and then this lines it up exact. But what I do when I do that is I'll make a mark. I'll actually take a Sharpie. There's no keyway there. I make a mark on the handle that shows where that single keyway has got to go so you'll know it's lined up when you glue it in. And uh, that, that's a fairly important thing because uh, you want to make sure it is. You don't want to have the, the clamp screw or the grip askew and um, it won't feel right when, you, when you're rolling with it. But uh, definitely the, the marker helps a lot. So I'm ready to glue this one back in. And um, again, you want to sand it, sand it around. Make sure you give it a good sand. Here it is. And now lock tight again. So we'll go same thing, strips of lock tight all the way around. We found uh, that we like to use the gel type of Loctite. The, um, the, the thin stuff kind of oozes everywhere and goes everywhere and, you know, glues your fingers together and everything. And uh, but the gel really is much easier to use just because you're not apt to get glue on you, not as apt to get glue on you. So again, I'll line up the keyway, or in this case, I'm lining up that mark I put on there, which is right on the keyway. There we go, it's right on, right in. You want to try to do it pretty much as uh, in one motion. But lined it up, put it in. And again, I will uh, let it sit, let it sit a little bit. Um, you know, when you're doing it, the way I do it is I'll, I'll do one of them if I'm doing a pair to shorten them. I'll do one of them and I won't screw the the grips back on until after I've done the second one and I'll go and screw the grip on, which is just like what I did when I just did that repair. This one here is, is now ready. You can screw it back on. So it, um, it's got plenty of time to go forward with that. Here's another thing that I will point out when I'm doing right now is the new M plug that you get is a little bit smaller hole. The, the screw of the grip actually cuts its own thread when, when the M plug's new. So we do it here, we install the grip. We do the M plug. Uh, we do the, the initial uh, M plug, you're actually uh, threading it. But the first go, when, you're, when you put a new M plug in, it's gonna go hard like that one did. And, um, and that's a wool. It's not a bad idea to go in and out a little bit because that will, uh, it, it already goes easier. There we go. But you notice when I screwed it in, 
it was really, it went hard. And it goes easy now. So now that one's in. That's got the new end plug in. And this one here is now the shorter ore that um, we'll wait a while, wait a little bit to, to put that in. But um, the next thing that I was going to show is when you have that situation when you um, get a grip that's stuck, and that could be a number of reasons. That could be the um, the M plug <clears throat> is somehow compromised. It's either um, I've actually seen the screw not be aligned correctly and had the screw go right into the M plug sideways or at an angle and stick right out the handle. We've seen that before. Um, but m most of the time, what happens is the um, the screw on the end gets stripped and the six mil size uh, won't always do it. This, this is really nice. It's a really positive connection, positive purchase. So it does unscrew really easily. But if you don't have the exact right size or you use a tool before that strips the threads out, um, they're really, really difficult to get out. And the way we fix it here is we actually, you sacrifice the grip, but um, you can actually get the grip off by, by cutting it with a hacksaw. If you make a cut down through, and the screw's inside a little bit, it's in about oh, a quarter of an inch. I want to go a little more than that. I'm going to go probably a little more than a centimeter because you can see how far in the head is. What you want to do is cut the grip without cutting the, uh, the handle itself or the unplugged. And you want to cut it all the way around. And um, again, you sacrifice the grip, but if the grip is worn and you want to get it off the change, it doesn't matter that you do this. So I cut it all the way around. And it's going to cut through the plastic. There's not only the rubber, but the inner part of the core of the grip is what you're cutting. And that's the black plastic that, that um, you're seeing right here. And uh, you'll know because you'll get all the way around like I just did. And um, you're going to be into the screw. And that's where I'm at right now. So, all the way around. I got the. Uh, Okay, this, this case, let me see here. What you'll have sometimes is uh, the cap, and you can you can get it off. There's a couple ways you can get it off. You can get it off with a chisel, or a lot of times it'll just pop off. So, not really easy. This one was an undamaged one, so there we go. So the cap pops off on the grip, and now you've got the screw exposed, you can get off. and. What I do is I take uh, vice grips and I'll lock right on, I'll tighten, tighten right up to that. Now you can get a, a real good grip on, on the uh, screw itself. And even though it's stripped, you can clamp it on really hard and you can turn it out. See this? The screw will come out. You get the screw out like this. Comes out, yep, yeah, comes out like that. Now you can, let me loosen up the uh, clamp screw. I hadn't done that before. Now you can slice the grip off. So the grip is ruined, but it did not hurt the hand. And so you can install a new grip right over it without any problems. So that's the best way to, um, to fix one that's been stripped.